At their most basic, scene headings tell a reader where and when your scene takes place, but when you get that wrong, they just tell a reader that you don't really know what you're doing. Scene headings, also known as shot headings, slug lines, or just slugs, use your default page margins and are always written in all caps. You're also free to bold them, and you'll see them underlined in a multicam sitcom script, but that's a topic for a future video. Every scene in your script will begin with a primary scene heading, also called a master scene heading, with double or triple line spacing before it. Both are common. Scene headings can get quite complex, but for now we're going to stick to three basic heading elements you'll need in every scene. Camera placement, location, and time of day. Primary scene headings begin with camera placement. Interior, abbreviated as INT, means the camera's placed indoors. Interior, temple, the sanctuary, day. While exterior, abbreviated as EXT, indicates the camera's placed outdoors. Exterior, at the edge of the digs, day. And don't forget the period at the end of the abbreviations. Most of the time, you can just use INT for an inside scene and EXT for an outside scene. But thinking in terms of camera placement helps when you get into odd situations, like a scene where the camera would be inside filming through a window to capture something happening outside. Interior, Anna's house, living room, continuous. In that case, interior is still correct, even though the subject is outside. Sometimes you might create a scene best shot with a combination of interior and exterior cameras the most common being car scenes. Writing a new slug every time we cut between the interior and exterior would make the scene a pain to read, so instead we use ext slash int to indicate cameras will be placed in both. Exterior slash interior, fire truck continuous. Some writers swear they need to be in this order since an interior is always within an exterior, but no one that matters seems to actually care in practice, and many writers simplify even further to just e slash i or i slash e. Camera placement is always followed by the scene location, which fills in the where part of the scene heading's where and when function. As a general rule, it's best to keep your location as simple as possible and avoid using descriptors that would be better served in the, well, description. Something short like spooky house might be warranted, but spooky boarded up rotted Victorian house with ratty sunflowers is probably better communicated elsewhere. Some scenes may also require nested locations to give context to a setting. Interior. Lily and Sergey's apartment, bedroom, day. These are usually ordered from most general to most specific and can be separated by dashes or commas. Most commonly, you'll see this used when scenes are set in different rooms within a single building. Interior, Lily and Sergey's apartment, living room, day. Or when scenes are set in buildings and areas within a larger campus. Exterior, Amaya Corporation, Rotunda, day. But nested locations can include almost anything. If the scene is exterior and there's a compelling enough reason to make the audience aware, you could include the city, country, continent, or even planet. Exterior, South Boston, Tom Foley Park, day. You can do this with interior scenes too. Interior, South Boston, L Street Bar and Grill, night. But since the broader location isn't technically part of the interior, some writers insist it needs to be added as a note at the end of your location element or full slug line. The last element you'll see in almost every primary scene heading is the time of day when your scene takes place, the when. And just like it helped to think of the camera and production when choosing between interior and exterior, it's a good idea to keep production constraints in mind when choosing your time of day. Most of the time, this should be simply night or day. If the scene takes place while it's dark outside, use night. If it's daylight out, use day. But you can get more specific. This scene from Goodwill Hunting originally used afternoon for the time of day. Exterior, Tom Foley Park, South Boston, afternoon. And it's not uncommon to see other times like dawn or dusk. Exterior, summit, dawn. But a limited window like this is often impractical for a production. Exterior, unfinished skyscraper, high over the city, sunset. Only being able to film during a specific hour of the day often requires expanding the shooting schedule or forcing production to pay for a lighting setup, a volume, or post work to give the appearance of a specific time of day, regardless of the actual time on the clock. But if you're writing a vampire movie, a sunrise might be important enough to justify that. Ultimately, it's a judgment call. Remember how I said the time of day is in almost every primary heading? Well, what sense does the time of day make when you're in space and don't turn away from the sun once a day? Which is why some writers leave this bit blank for scenes in space. Interior, Rebel Blockade Runner, Main Passageway. While others use night or day to indicate the lighting or the presence or absence of a sun. Exterior, Outer Space, 600 kilometers above Earth, day, or even whether the characters are going through their daily routines or should be resting through the night. Interior, monitoring station, day. 
Sometimes your scene might be better set up by indicating a time relative to the scene before it, like moments earlier or four years later. Exterior, beach, half hour later. But be careful with this. Time of day is great for orienting your reader generally within a timeline, but if you need the audience to know that exactly three years or 30 minutes have passed, that needs to find its way onto the screen or speakers through your description, on-screen text, or dialogue. Similarly, if it's important that the action on screen moves from one location to a connected location without a jump in time, you could just repeat the time of day and make it clear in the description. Exterior, Club 24 Clubhouse, Night. Samantha bursts out of the door, completing her frantic exit. She bends over, trying to catch her breath. But describing that no time has elapsed between scenes is often awkward and tends to interrupt the exact flow you're trying to create, which is why in these situations you'll often see the time of day replaced with continuous. While it's not a huge deal, locations that aren't physically connected can't technically be continuous because the action must be continuous, not just the timeline. If you're worried using continuous might cause your reader to lose track of the time of day, you can always include the time of day and add the continuous as a scene heading note. Interior, the West Computing Room, day, continuous. Which is something we'll cover in an upcoming video. Which approach you choose will depend on how obvious your continuity is in context. The last thing you want to do is force a reader to stop reading because they needed to flip back a few pages to figure out if it's night or day. While continuous scenes change locations but not time, a scene that jumps ahead in time without changing locations is indicated by the use of later, or sometimes moments later depending on your timeline. Exterior, road, day, moments later. Though it might not technically be correct, you'll also sometimes see later used across locations to indicate a scene takes place later within the same day or night, or to emphasize a link between the end of one scene and the beginning of the next. Interior, nurse's office later. This concept trips up a lot of new writers because every single scene in a linear story technically occurs later, but just remember that it's only really needed for time jumps within a single location. Interior, high school choir room, later. If the camera placement and location are unchanged from scene to scene, repeating them in the new primary heading isn't always necessary, which is why you'll often see later completely on its own line in a spec script. When parts of a scene heading are given their own line like this without camera placement, they're known as secondary headings and come with their own rules and use cases, which is why you should check out this video to see exactly how to use them to direct the mind's eye of your reader and control the pacing of your story.